The Lord be with you. Today is Tuesday. We look at the Catechism. Today we are continuing our walk through the explanation of the second article, article of the Creed. Let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have sent your Son who has redeemed us and has given us eternal blessedness. We pray that you bless our time pondering this great salvation. Amen. The meaning of the second article, I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Now, we have looked at those sections and have seen who Jesus is, how he has saved us. Now we move into the portion where it talks about why. That I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. So who Jesus is, he is our Lord. He is true God and true man. He has redeemed us by his blood so that we may be his own. We were lost. We were under the condemnation of eternal death. We were in the realm of, of Satan. And now that we have been redeemed, we are uh, our Lord's. We are his own. And we live under him in his kingdom. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom, and it's a gracious kingdom. It's the kingdom where he blesses us in body and soul and where we serve him. There are three ways, or, or rather, we, there are three descriptions of our serving him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Now, earlier, we talked about how our Lord redeemed us, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won us from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil. Now we see that we live under Christ and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Righteousness is that right standing before God. We stand before him uh, not in our sin because we have been purchased by the blood of Christ. So we are in a right standing now before God and in innocence that we are, our sin is not counted against us and in blessedness. So we are eternally blessed by God. And the conclusion here, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. So the reason that we know this is true is because though Christ died, though he suffered for the sins of the world, he has risen from the dead. And therefore, having conquered death, he lives forever. And not only does he live, but also he reigns. So he, having ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, he now is in the position of all power and authority and therefore reigns for eternity. Now his reign is not only one of, of blessing us in our needs, but, uh, or rather I should say, it, it's, it's not, re remember Jesus said before Pontius Pilate on his in his trial, uh, my kingdom is not of this world. So the fact that he reigns over us, that does not mean that we're going to ha have everything that we need and, and never have any troubles. We, we live in a fallen world and we're still, um, 
we still have our sinful nature. But his reign is, is a gracious one. So he, he, he provides for us, not only physically and temporarily, uh, but, but especially spiritually and eternally. So when we get to heaven, then of course, all of our needs will be uh, met and we will have no needs at all. And the conclusion to the meaning of the second article is the same as the conclusion to the meaning of the first article. This is most certainly true. We believe that this is true because the word of God has said it because God has shown it to us. That is the second article of the creed. Let us close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings and that in your Son, we have eternal uh, righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, and that we may serve you. We pray that you bless us as we do, according to your good and gracious will. Amen. The Lord's peace be with you.